So after hours, perhaps even days of painstaking research, you finally decided on a pair of fancy headphones to replace those crappy little earbuds that came with your smartphone, and good for you! But unfortunately, actually using them often isn't a matter of just plugging your cans into a headphone jack. You see, nicer headphones often need more power in order to operate properly, due in part to their high impedance, which is a measure of how much something resists electrical current. High impedances allow headphones to be built in ways that can result in better overall sound quality, but they also mean that they often need an amplifier in order to drive them properly. If your headphones don't get enough power, not only will they be too quiet to enjoy, but they also won't sound right in different frequencies, meaning you've just paid a lot of money for nice headphones that won't sound nearly good enough to justify their cost. But how do you know if an amp is even necessary? Typically, many cheaper headphones, or headphones that are designed specifically to work with portable devices such as smartphones, will have lower impedances, usually 35 ohms or less, making an additional amplifier unnecessary in most cases. But once you start getting to 50 ohms and higher, amplifiers can make an audible difference, and north of 100 ohms, you'll definitely need one. If you're wondering how much impedance your headphones have, this can usually be found pretty easily on your product packaging or a spec page. So if it turns out that you need an amplifier, what should you pick? Other than following the usual steps of checking online reviews and manufacturer reputations, a good place to start is to determine not only your headphones impedance rating, but their efficiency or sensitivity, which is a measure of how many decibels the headphones will output per milliwatt or millivolt. If your headphone specs don't give a number, it's easy to look up efficiency or sensitivity ratings for lots of popular models online. Once you've got one of these numbers, you can enter it, along with your impedance rating, on one of a handful of freely available headphone power calculators online, a few of which will be listed in the video description down below. You can then tell how many milliwatts you need to get your headphones up to a certain level of loudness. A good idea is to assume 110 decibels, which is about 10 lower than the threshold of pain. After you've gotten this number, just have a look at whether the power output of the amp you like is at least that high. This will be listed as how many milliwatts it can put into a certain number of ohms. So make sure the power output is sufficient for your headphones impedance. Many amp spec sheets will say things like, this model can put 40 milliamps into 300 ohms to give you a better idea of exactly how much juice it can provide. It's also a good idea to get something a little more powerful than the calculator says that you need, as many headphones can have variable impedances depending on whether you're listening to low or high frequency sounds. For example, popular models of Sennheiser headphones are known to have impedance spikes in the lower frequencies. Again, you can look up impedance graphs for lots of headphones online to see if they're significantly different than what's listed on the box, and choose an amplifier accordingly. The last main specification you should be looking at is the amplifier's output impedance, which is separate from your headphones impedance rating. A good rule of thumb to follow is you want to make sure that your amp's output impedance is at least eight times lower than your headphones impedance. So if you've got a 200 ohm set of headphones, you want an amplifier with an output impedance of no more than 25 ohms. Okay, Luke, I get it. It's super important to get the right amp, but what about the right DAC? I mean, it's even in the video title. Come on, man. Well, a digital analog converter can be helpful in certain circumstances. A DAC takes the digital signal from your computer, whether it's an MP3 or FLAC file or whatever, and converts it into an analog signal that your headphones can then turn into sound. Your computer has a DAC built in to allow you to plug in headphones or speakers, but some cheaply implemented DACs can pick up electrical noise from inside your PC, which can result in hissing, crackling, static, all that kind of stuff right to your headphones or speakers. So if you're experiencing these symptoms or weird sounding audio in general, an external DAC that's outside of the electrically noisy environment that is your computer, it can definitely help. But if you aren't suffering from these symptoms, you probably don't need an external DAC, especially as onboard motherboard audio has improved quite a bit over recent years.
But some audiophiles do claim that a nice DAC can open up the soundstage on nicer headphones, especially open-backed ones. So if you really want to explore high-end hi-fi, it can be something worth considering. And although all this sounds like a lot of unpleasant math, a little work can go a long way in making sure you get that transcendent listening experience that you've always wanted. Speaking of great experiences, FreshBooks is on a mission to make freelancers less stressed and more organized through their easy to use tool for crafting and sending professional invoices in seconds. FreshBooks also helps you track your hours so when it comes time to create said invoice, you know exactly what you did, when you did it, who you did it for, all that kind of stuff. And you can even accept deposits for that work through their platform so you get paid on your schedule. They also have a tool to manage your expense reports. Their mobile app lets you take a picture and then that's pretty much all you have to do. It handles the rest. Getting started on FreshBooks is extremely simple, even if you're not a numbers person. And they say, especially if you're not a numbers person. You can try FreshBooks for free for 30 days by going to freshbooks.com forward slash techwiki and entering techwiki in the how did you hear about us section. All right, guys, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Check out our other channels like Linus Tech Tips and the much ballyhooed channel Super Fun. Also, if you guys are interested in the shirt that I'm wearing, the like gold plated tech quickie shirt thing, this will be available not yet, but soon. So watch that uh, description down below. Also, if you want to see those links for the power calculator things, those are also in the description down below. Leave suggestions for other tech wikis that you want us to see or make videos about. I can talk sometimes. Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.